And when we do this process like we did before lunch, when we take a rational expression and break it up into partial fractions, this is what we call partial fraction decomposition. So when we find those two smaller fractions, we call this process the partial fraction decomposition. Um, and I showed you one way that you can handle solving for those numerators. Another way, which uh, some of you may have used, is what's called the heavy side method. Really what I showed you is a process of the heavy side method. Uh, but the heavy side method works like this, and those of you that had this in pre-calc honors, you probably saw it back in um, pre-calc honors. So again, the notice the denominator is already factored for you. So we want to figure out what the numerators are going to look like. We want to solve for A and B. So we know we're going to let X be equal to 1. So when you let X be equal to 1, you plug it into that larger fraction, eliminating the factor that um, 1 came from. So that's where you get the negative 2 from. And then you do the same thing with the other factor again. Um, this is the heavy side method. I don't care which method you use in terms of solving for A and B, but this is another method that you can use in terms of solving for A and B, those of you that do the heavy side method. Okay, so let's take a look at example one. So now we're going to use the integration. Now this is the thought process, guys. Shh. Obviously on your test, I'm not going to tell you which method. You have to be able to recognize these integrals and know which method you're going to do. We always check for u sub first. Obviously, a u sub is not going to work on the denominator. Um, this is a factorable denominator. So since this is a factorable denominator, and obviously it's not set up for an inverse trig, this is where you're going to do the partial fraction decomposition. Now, first of all, you can pull the constant out. What constant can you pull out of your integral? You can pull out a 5. So I can rewrite this as 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 3 dx. So then to do my partial fraction decomposition, I'm going to take 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 3. And again, I'm going to separate this into two smaller fractions, one with a denominator of x plus 4, the other one with a denominator of x minus 3. Notice both these factors are linear. So like we talked about before lunch, I know that to be proper, the degree has to be one less, so these numerators are going to be constants. So I'm going to call them A and B. Again, you can use the heavy side method, or like I showed you before lunch, clear the fractions out of the equation, multiply everything by x plus 4, x minus 3. So this is going to give me A times x minus 3 plus B times x plus 4. So again, if I look at my one factor of x minus 3 and look at the 0 that comes from x minus 3, I'm going to let x be equal to 3. Plug 3 in, so I have 1 is equal to 3 minus 3 goes to 0. 3 plus 4 is going to give me a 7b. So b will be equal to 1 seventh. So any questions on where I found b from? Now, if I look at my other factor of, neg of x plus 4, the 0 is going to be negative 4. So I'm going to plug in a negative 4. So then 1 is equal to negative 4 minus 3 is a negative 7a, and negative 4 plus 4 goes to 0. So then what's a going to be equal to? a will be equal to what? Negative 1 seventh. So now I know what these partial fractions are going to look like. So what I now can do is I can take this integral and I can split it up now into two smaller fractions. Remember, we have the constant of 5 in the front times. I found a to be negative 1 seventh, so I have negative 1 seventh over x plus 4. Plus, I found b to be 1 seventh over x minus 3 dx. So now you should be able to integrate the partial fractions. So you guys go ahead and integrate those partial fractions for me. So did we come up with um, negative 5 sevenths natural log of x plus 4 plus 5 sevenths times the natural log of x minus 3 plus c? All right. Any questions on um, the 
the integration on this, this example here. Let's take a look at another example. Now, when you are working on problems like this, first of all, we always check for a U sub first. Um, again, if I did a U sub, I'd have to have a DU of 6x minus 8. Um, not only do you want to look at factoring denominators, but you also want to look at factoring numerators. Is there a constant you can factor out of the numerator? Five. So I could factor a five out of the numerator over. Can I factor the denominator of 3x squared minus 8x minus 3? Yes, you can. Well, you can't take a 3 out of the denominator. Slide and divide, or you can do the x method, or whatever method you want to do. But you want to factor the denominator, so you guys go ahead and factor that denominator. Whichever method you use to factor quadratics where the leading coefficient is not equal to 1, just do it. In decomposition, you want to make sure you pull out any constants. What constant, now that you have both the numerator and denominator factored, what constant can you yank out? 5. So I can pull out the 5 times my integral of x minus 1 over 3x plus 1 times x minus 3 dx. And again, what I want to do is I want to do my partial fraction decomposition on that rational part. So again, I know what the denominators are going to look like for my two partial fractions. One denominator will be 3x plus 1. Again, this is still a linear factor in the denominator, so I know my numerator will be a constant. And then I have another denominator of x minus 3 which is also linear, so the numerator is also going to be a constant. Again, you can do the heavy side method, or again, like I showed you, clear the equation of all the fractions. So I'm going to take x minus 1, set it equal to a times x minus 3, plus b times 3x plus 1. So again, looking at my one factor of x minus 3, what am I going to let x be equal to? I'll let x be equal to 3. Now, you want to make sure you plug the 3 into the entire equation anywhere you see an x. So 3 minus 1 is 2 equals, this 3 minus 3 will go to the 0. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10, so I end up with 10b. So what's b going to be equal to? b would be equal to what? b will be equal to 1 fifth. 2 over 10 or 1 fifth. You guys go ahead and try and find A for me. Careful when you're solving, because if you make a mistake on the A and the B, the rest of the problem is going to fall apart. You'll get those coefficients incorrect, so just be careful. So now we can go ahead and we can rewrite the integral. Again, you have the constant of 5 on the front. Remember, A is 2 fifths, so I have 2 fifths divided by 3x plus 1 plus b, which I found to be 1 fifth, times x minus 3 dx. So now go ahead and integrate term by term for me. Don't forget, you may have to do u subs. So you should end up with 2 thirds times the natural log of 3x plus 1 plus the natural log of x minus 3 plus c. So any questions, guys, on how you can solve these using partial fraction decomposition? Now, <clears throat> I know your favorite thing to do is long division. Again, I talked about before lunch what an improper rational expression is going to look like. Remember, if it's improper, the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. So in this particular case, when you look at this example, notice the numerator is a degree of 5. The denominator is a degree of 3. So before you can do any type of integration, what you want to do is you want to make it proper. And you make it proper by your long division. Again, synthetic division isn't even an option because you have an x to the third minus 4x in the denominator. So just like we did before lunch, we're going to go ahead and do my 
long division, x to the third minus 4x. Again, I've got an x to the fifth. I'm going to put that placeholder of 0, x to the fourth, minus 4x to the third, plus 0x squared, plus 0x plus 1. So review the process before lunch. Remember, you're going to take x to the third, and you're going to divide it into x to the fifth. So what is x to the fifth divided by x to the third? x squared. And then you multiply. x squared times x to the third is an x to the fifth. x squared times negative 4x is a negative 4x to the third. 